G'day everyone, uh, my name is Glenn Sarty and I'm a senior software developer at Puppet and today I'm going to talk to you about sharing. The term CAMS was first coined by Damon Edwards and John Willis back in 2010 and sharing was one of the four pillars. But I went back through all of the previous DevOps Days talks and out of 1,500 or so, there was only a handful about sharing. In fact, the most focused talk I could find about sharing was by Patrick Dubois back in 2012. And the topic was, Many DevOps talks talk relate to the CAMS acronym. The S for sharing is usually taken for granted and does not get much explanation. But in this talk, it'll be right in the center. Without sharing, there is no DevOps and successful adoption is impossible. So today, I want to help even that score by appealing to your selfish side and try and answer the question, sharing, what's in it for me? And strangely enough, the most selfish way to share is not to share with anybody at all but sharing with a rubber duck. Rubber ducking is a technique that, as you share a problem or an idea with a duck, it helps the solution become clearer. You start talking through a complex problem or idea and bing, the light goes off and the answer just appears in front of you. Now, there are many thoughts about why this works, but here's two. First, your mouth is slower than your brain. When you're speaking to your duck, it forces your brain to slow down and process the information in depth. The second, you need to take into account what the duck knows, which is absolutely nothing. <laughs> it, forces you, it forces you to think from another point of view and see other solutions. So if rubber ducking is speaking about a complex problem, what about writing? Well, speaking and writing are very different tasks, but they do share a a common theme, which is storytelling. Now, I'm not talking about children's bedtime stories or agile user stories. I'm talking about telling your story, autobiographical storytelling. Dr. Sherry Hamby, who is a research professor of psychology at the University of South, says, I have been surprised at the power of emotional autobiographical storytelling. This means writing about events that, and people that have mattered to you in your own life, not excuse me, not just describing the facts of your lives. Research shows that even brief exercises can have substantial impacts on psychological and physical health even months after. In particular, Dr. Hamby says that through this kind of storytelling, we can build our resilience to adversity. She and her research team found four main benefits. Firstly, finding your voice. This means learning how to express yourself and how to think about what has happened in your life in a way that makes sense. It may appear that events in your life are random, but when you start writing about them, you have a beginning, middle, and end. You can start to see how experiences, good and bad, have shaped your life. Secondly, reaffirming your values. Just by writing about a story, it can show where your focus is and clarify what's important to you. Also, what you choose to leave out or minimize can show what's even trivial to you. Thirdly, sharing your story. Writing your story is good, but sharing is an underappreciated aspect of storytelling. When you share your story and pass on wisdom, you realize your words can be a positive power in other people. And lastly, building resilience. Once you have found your voice, reaffirmed your values, and shared your story, it builds a sense of well-being, which can then build resilience when adversity will next strike. Resilience is strengthened by recognizing that we are all experts in our, all, in our own lives and we all have something to share with others. So how do you start writing stories then? And it's quite possible you're already doing this. If you have a blog, I'm sure you're writing stories about that you want to tell about uh, stories that you want to tell that matter to you about problems that have you have overcome. Or perhaps at your job you've written a, a post-mortem about an outage. Now, they tend to be less emotional, but they are definitely autobiographical stories and they are definitely rooted in adversity. So to answer the question, what's in it for me? Solving my own problems, thinking from other people's perspectives, increasing my resilience and my mental health. Sounds great, doesn't it? Yes? 
So as we move into open spaces and maybe start sharing our own stories, I'd like to leave you with a final thought from the poet James Russell Lau. For not what we give, but what we share. For DevOps without the sharer will go nowhere. Thank you. <laughs>